Is he? Hmm. Definitely say it out loud because I just started to record. I'm definitely going to give his phone number and address out on the uh, <laughs> And I will show. delete all of that. <laughs> he is just northwest of Coors Field. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, downtown. So, 70 yeah. west to Golden. So, 70 to 58 to Golden. You can take 93 up. Hmm. Okay, we can we can go over this later. We don't need to <laughs> do this for that long. Seventy two has some wicked switchbacks in the middle of it. Looks like it. But then sevens actually, sevens like I, I I wouldn't. I think of sevens similar to like a canyon road, the way like Matt and those guys and Jeff talk about like canyons and in, in California, but like without the drop offs. The drop offs make it exciting, though. Okay. We have a couple of quad trails here in the Pennsylvania area where it's like elevated trail, hundred foot drop off highway. <laughs> and there's like yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. next to it. And the first time we were doing it, I was like, Oh, this is terrifying. And I look and I'm on a, like a 48 inch wide quad and I look behind me and my dad's in a 55 inch wide side by side and the tires are out over the side of the oh, man. trail. It's like, Oh, this is going to go so wrong. <laughs> it was <laughs> fine. FJ ad we have never gone back. Oh no, the one of it on like the side of the cliff where they helicoptered yeah. it in. I think it was a uh, is it an 80 series? I don't know if it was an FJ. I thought it was a Jeep. It's definitely not an 80. Because it's supposed it to that. look it's supposed to look like it's like the 50s. Oh man, I'm gonna this is gonna take way too long. <laughs> Last week with Lynn, I could snap photos out of midair. And today, were, the live production with Lynn last week was like, she said something, and Chris had the picture like loaded and had it going. And it was oh, like, nice. how is this even happening? This nice. I, so I almost like sent Zach a message and was like, dude, I'm getting close. <laughs> I wouldn't, I would never send him that phrasing. Well, yeah. Well, because he would actually have fun with it. It would be, he'd be like, come yeah, on over. I, I, would, I would never. Um, so anyway, so our show is extremely, extremely, extremely informal, as you can probably guess. Sure. Uh, there <laughs> is very little structure. Um, Looks pretty structured, though, to me. Oh, the oh, notes. That's, that's an outline. Not that's bad. just like jumping points. It's, hey, it's not bad, though. It kind of just goes all over the place. Chance, what's your Instagram? Daddy Hills, P-H-A-T-T-Y-H-A-L-E-S. P-H-A-T-T-Y. Yeah, it's, it's down in the notes. Okay. Down at the bottom. Oh, I didn't get that far down. Yeah. Searched, at least this way I can like, now I got all these images. I, I, I Google image searched uh, truck ad side of mountain and got a helicopter crashing into a mountain. That's not it. That's not what you no, want. I missed it That's too. definitely not it. I'm never going to find it. <laughs> Anyways. It was nice of a, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> we, we start the show. I introduce this real fast. I say, I'm Chris. He says he's Ross. You get to say your chance. Um, okay. There's only been two times I've forgotten to say what I just said, and it was both with Derek Powell from Top Gear America. <laughs> so both times we got to the part where he says, I'm Derek, and there was this poignant pause. Oops. We're going We're going like this, like, you, you. And he's just like. <laughs> he's eating a salad the second time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we just go, we go intro, then we do a little news. bit of, there's a little Wait. bit of news. I will try to bite my tongue on some of the Jeep stuff. And then we just kind of. No, no, no. I, I think we go full bore in the shit. Oh, okay. Okay. I still I'll, follow, I'll follow your lead through that stuff. I still can't find a wheel based measurement or like a, a total width measurement. Durango. It's Take huge. That. No, it's Ram 1500. It's not so, Durango. Yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking the. Um, You're thinking Grand, Grand Cherokee, Cherokee L. L. Very creative guys. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so then we talk about, I mean, Chris and I usually do like quick project update things and I actually have a lot of project update things. Yeah, I'm, I'm going super short tonight so we can get to you. <laughs> and I've then spent, we'll jump right into chance. I probably have right. 10 hours on the truck this week alone. So um, nice. I got a bunch. That's Anyways, cool. let's do it. Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Chance. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. We're pretty much going to go all over the place tonight, which is my favorite show. Uh, we're socially distanced before it was mandated. As always, I'm still in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast and Chance is in Utah. 
Yep. Yep. I still need to visit out there. It's on you the do. list. You it's do. really on the list. But come in the, this, come in the spring. I was going to say this like, time of year is not really the perfect time to like explore the roads and and do all the fun outdoor yeah, stuff. Unless you unless you ski or do that kind of outdoor stuff. Yeah. Come come in the spring. We'll, okay. we'll get back Sounds to like that. Sounds like Like I'm yeah. also <laughs> on the way. Like you yep. can see me on the way to him. That's true. Very true. And I'm pretty sure you have another pit stop that you're between me and him. Like <laughs> I could just do like a, a three point ping pong stop and just bounce right back, <laughs> right there you go. down through Denver and back east. The only problem is the Connecticut to Kansas drive sucks. It seems pretty miserable. I've done the yeah. Connecticut to Chicago drive, and it is awful. Never want to do it again. Is that yeah, I? It's eighty to eighty four, and it's just oh. yeah. Come I've done like, Toronto to Tucson, and it's it crosses holy, a lot of the same. Oh roads. my God! What was yeah. that in? Uh, Jeep Cherokee, actually. <laughs> oh no! Like an XJ? XJ? An, X, an XJ? Yeah. Oh, that sounds horrible. Homie, my back hurts just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how bad was it in the wind? Just like all, like just uh, seemed gathered. okay. Oh, that's a long trip for an XJ. Yeah. Yeah. Things have been through a lot. We'll talk more about that XJ later, though. Okay. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, that, that's what they call foreshadowing. Um, Excuse or me. a teaser. Ross, I am, I didn't look up anything with this. With the Polaris? Yeah, I got it. So nothing. for a while, there's been talk of electric UTVs. It makes all the sense in the world. Generally, you don't go over 100 miles a day in the woods. Most people don't do more than 20. So electric power, you know, no sound, obviously, except for whatever the tires are going over and no emissions and all the torque in the world right off idle. It's like the perfect combination for a side-by-side or an ATV. So Polaris is finally working with uh, zero motorcycles actually. And they're building a sport focused Ranger, which will be electric. So basically not a full fledged like razor, but an electric Ranger. So it's kind of work play, but with more focus on the, play and yes they have given us basically the same teaser that hummer and jeep and every other manufacturer you can think of has used over the last two years yeah what they, they yeah. are like yeah just show them the headlights everyone does that shot <laughs> it's a uh, crystal white leds and Is it, that's it i feel like they started using that shot since like way back when cayenne first came out and when everybody was like using Lightroom to like lighten the image and we ended up seeing all the body shape ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That, now it's just panel like literally. Panel. Right. Yeah. It was like, here's the uh, ninth gen Civic and people would just like <laughs> brighten it up and uh, change the exposure and like, okay, yeah, you spent how many hours doing that for that? Yeah. But like you can turn it off that fast. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's kind of the perfect machine for, you know, tight, hilly trails around here especially where you want to run a big tire with a lot of ground clearance well and And also it's also something you and i have talked fairly frequently about like and off-roading with no noise except for the tires on the ground is better you know natural next step is for somebody probably polaris in a couple years to come out with something like the wrangler 4xe like a in between where you can run in both obviously packaging might be a little bit difficult based on just the vehicle size itself itself. But I am very much looking forward to it. And given I ride a player's ATV, that's kind of, you know, faster than it needs to be as is that kind of power and something electric is where do you put scary. the battery packs? I don't know, probably in the same place that the motor would go. Okay, so like you just know, fill which, the engine bay. <laughs> It's actually not the engine maybe, bay on side by side. Flat it's floor? behind. Oh, that's right. It's it rear. Could be flat. Yeah, but the engines actually sit right behind you in yeah. the side by sides, which makes accessing things so difficult. <laughs> like changing a belt or like doing an oil change on a razor is like the end of the world. But <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to this. And then similarly, I, that company Canoe, the electric startup, quote unquote, and you know, quote unquote startup, because I don't know. They haven't delivered anything yet. They released. I hope I'm both. Sorry, of these, I'm looking yeah, at images. I hope both of you saw pictures of this because I it's can't. like, it's like I haven't yet actually. It. Oh, buddy. It looks like it came out of like a. a it's like a video not game, a, not a Pixar movie, but like a DreamWorks movie. So it's almost a cab over. It's it's kind of a cab okay. over pickup. 
Uh, but you know, obviously there's room in front of you so you don't get absolutely pulverized and a, a head on, but it, 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 it kind of looks like a, a Rivian robot. It kind of reminds me of, you remember the old micro machines, little yes. toys? <laughs> yes. You remember the, remember the, the mini uh, city van thing they had that opened it, up? It yes. kind of looks yes. like that. <laughs> yes. It looks like that. Chris, can you pull a picture of that? Because that is so accurate. I mean, the, given the people who designed that probably are like right around our age or a little bit older and also played with those as kids. So I, oh like the lineage Lord. is perfect, but it's like, Oh, I don't it's, want to buy one. I just want a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you can still buy that. Uh, uh, but it, it looks ridiculous. It's like bubble front. It's almost like, um, yeah. you know, full flat faced bus front and then pick up bed. And they showed one with like a cap on the back and they're, Quoting 600 horsepower, oh my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> totally that. Dude, if that thing was lifted on like 35s and had an electric drivetrain, it would be killer. So oh my God. this reminds me, there's a micro machine in my backyard and every summer when I mow, I see it and I never pick it up. <laughs> oh my God. You mean the, the van or like an individual? No, like one of the one. small little cars. You're like, going to run that over with a lumber and eject it. <laughs> I know it's like off to the side. It never picks it up for some reason. Oh, I don't know. So you're one of the dogs will find it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be in poop. So it's uh it's you know, it's not vaporware, but it's a pipe dream at this point for this thing well, to like, actually hit the roads. It it's interesting, like when you compare it to like the actual van, it's like they literally just quit. They're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Just like just they've done it. some yeah. modification to it. Like Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look bad. If if we had never had vehicles designed with hoods as is for engines, and that was you know what we were familiar with, it it it's not a bad looking thing. It just looks like it would also come to like life it. in the middle of the night and attack you, you know, and try and <laughs> <laughs> steal all your credit cards, and so it can go away. I might like even it. be kind of Pokemon ish looking too. Yeah, do that too a little bit. Got to drive them all. <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, that's a solid joke and i understand it because my kids oh there was a pokemon when you were younger come on oh no chris was born in 1852 apparently. i was born in the 1900s thank you <laughs> same dude okay so yeah but i thing... graduated high school in the 1900s yeah i can't i can't say that i can't say that um I just, the only thing I wonder about with this canoe, first of all, love the name also, but I, I can't imagine with that much greenhouse, it will stay cool over the yeah. summer. And then it's an electric <laughs> so vehicle. So you're, you're yeah. just depleting the battery like crazy to keep it cool inside. But we had the same concerns about the crazy windshield roof thing on the Teslas. So In can we talk about like how far away, like I, I know there's no hood, mm -hmm. but like, how do you know where the front of the car is? Like where the windshield you, comes down? Like how do you clean the bottom of the windshield? Very carefully. <laughs> you mean on the maybe inside it, maybe it or lifts the outside? Up. Maybe it's like clamshell and lifts up and you can climb in from the front. That would be cool as hell. I need, what, like, need like a Swiffer on an extension to get up in there. One of the light bulb changers yeah, where you can yeah, like yeah. extend it halfway. <laughs> I so, think all right, let's move on to things, things that are real. Have. Anyway, that's, I mean, canoe vans exist in the wild. Like it's not completely fake. Like it's also not completely real. Yeah. It's not quite cyber truck, but it's not. <laughs> oh, my, my favorite misstep was, was okay, Lynn thinking I was talking about something else when I was talking about Cybertruck last week. Oh, yeah. And you were, you were arguing completely different yeah, we things. Choose. I don't even remember what the other vehicle was. Uh, I was arguing against Cybertruck and she was arguing for the other vehicle. And then for a while there, it was like, no, no, no Lynn, hold on. Slow down. Funny. Funny. Uh, okay. Let's go to our other new reveal. Jeep. Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. So it, oh, where'd you guys go? Okay, it opened the wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So it's the same, but different, right? So it's, it's the Wagoneer, Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. Right, but the same platform, wheelbase, shape, size, 
Like the Grand Wagoneer doesn't get you like an extra foot and a half a truck. Mm. It's more about trim level. Yeah, I think they're going after Mercedes with this one. Yeah, it's it's, fancy. It's, it does look it's, nice. It's not what I'd call a Jeep, but it does look nice. No. It's a lot. It it's huge. Stylistically reminds me more of the Commander than yeah. of anything that ever had a Wagoneer name on it. Yeah. Well, they had, to, they had to keep in line with like their modern Jeep. They couldn't all of a sudden go back to a square, which then again, that would probably make you think Commander more if it was more square. Probably, probably. But if you take your hand and cover the front of the vehicle and get, you know, just block off the seven slot grill, it could be anything from yeah, the back. Very true. You know, Chance, Chris and I joke all the time. He is a Sequoia and we joke weekly about how almost all of the current SUVs <laughs> of that size look like the Sequoia. They do. Which his is like 10 years old and they still 10? look all the same. 12? So they still look uh, the same. And if you now. if you take your fingers and block off the front of the yeah. Grand Wagon, it's the same vein. Right. I just want to go hang out at this house. Right? It looks like Colorado. <laughs> or Utah. There's a lot of snow there. Could, Could be Park Utah. City area, yeah. 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 Probably. Park City is supremely wealthy, right? Or is that so a lot of it? A lot of it is, yeah. Well, the... lot, lots of things shoot in Park City too. Mm. <laughs> a very very comfortable community when it comes to filming permits i think oh gotcha yeah a lot of leeway because the uh towns get a lot of money <laughs> yeah they, they have some really good um like like what do you call them benefits not benefits but uh, tax credits tax credits yeah mm. <laughs> it's like why everything's filmed in georgia now yeah All right thank you walking dead <laughs> <laughs> brought the state so much money when they did that so well, anyways, still in the Toronto, you know, yeah. they'll have, yeah. have their benefits. Yep. Okay. I did finally find the shot I was looking for. I wanted, I wanted to see how deep it is mm. because I have four kids. I mean, it's huge. I'm using all of those seats and there's an eight seater version. Mm. So there's no interior picture that looks like this in the regular Wagoneer trim, <laughs> even though the third row standard in either one. The only shot this of the inside is the Grand Wagoneer, which is why you get like the autobiography captain's chair. Right. The- but you can extrapolate and just kind of imagine what it would look like in Wagoneer trim, you know, imagine yeah. current Grand Cherokee seats, but trimmed a little nicer. And it's going to be that. So the, the thing that I really like is they finally included the trunk shot. You had to go really deep to find it, but it's there. <laughs> Oh, so it, this is this thing's gonna be like suburban size. We have to yeah, expect. think of like Navigator. I, I think it's like yeah. a Navigator Tahoe, regular Expedition Sequoia. Yeah. So as you said, at, I think they looked at how many Tahoes are sold and went, "All right, we could eat that number a little bit." Like <laughs> seriously, that's what they did with the four door Wrangler. Like, hmm, they, everybody is selling all these four door SUVs, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But just the quick rundown. So based on Ram 1500 frame, yep. body on frame, yep. which something the Grand Cherokee can't say. Uh, so it's a regular truck. It's a real, it's a real <laughs> truck. So, yeah. so we'll, we'll give it that. It can tow. It can tow a lot. It can tow a lot. Tow bas- basically 10,000 pounds. Yes. Yeah. A ton for a, uh, for an SUV, but given, so in terms of the ride, like, my brother has a Ram 1500. It rides better than a lot of SUVs. They I ride really nice, yeah. Coil well, springs are nice. Air suspension's helpful. I, I think there's a bunch of different suspension options. Because as I was trying to read the press release, I kept getting confused on which one they were talking about. <laughs> That's not what you want. No. <laughs> they had at one point on the Grand Cherokee, I think four or five different four-wheel drive options. Like quad track, quad track two, select track, select track two. Uh, you know, then there were like two other versions of the same part time. Uh, oh, did I not copy and paste that part of the press release in? You copied the select track terrain management system. Okay. I only got is, the one then. That's going to be the wannabe Land Rover button, which actually my parents' Grand Cherokee has. And it. So there's Quadra Track 1, the dial. Quadra Track 2, Quadra Track 2 with active low range and rear <laughs> electronics limited slip differential. 
So that's, that's three. That's enough for, <laughs> you know, a vehicle that literally nobody who buys it is going to care about any of and, that, except that it has four driven wheels. And that's yeah. only the, the four by four systems. That's not actual suspension components. Right. So quadra lift air suspension is what they're talking about. Cause you know, everything I mean, has air suspension now. Everything, yeah. everything. And Chris's kid thought that was really funny, <laughs> but I mean, 10 inches of ground clearance is strong. It's, you know, comparable to what you get with the big Range Rovers when they, when they were lifted into their highest setting. Um, I, I, I like that it's five, seven, you know, with e-torque and then six, four for the launch on the Grand Wagoneer. It's good power. It's got all the right stuff. Uh, ZF transmission, all of that stuff makes sense. Yeah. It checks the boxes. It, it's right in line with what they need to do. I just, I can't, I can't get past the face and the, the back. It's just. So the parts that are purely subjective are the parts you're struggling with. Correct. And given <laughs> our conversations with other people, I don't seem to be alone, which. It's very you know, corporate face. It looks like everything else Jeep's making. It's very yeah. mm -hmm. clean and simple and not really rugged. Is but it, is it because it didn't throw back enough to like, it didn't get retro enough for you, Ross? <laughs> no, I, I think something about the proportions don't work for me. Give it really, this thing could look a million times better in person because you know, it, it's pictures don't really do a vehicle justice, especially when it's the first time you actually see it. Yeah. Especially these but, days too. Yeah, everything's so complicated, you know, the how many curves there are and how many angles. But I, why don't they ever throw a human in any press photos? Like we never know how like big something is. Size? Like, <laughs> yes. I know. Like I'm looking at this and I'm five nine. I don't know if the the hood is like at my, you know, my torso or top. like my chest. I think it's your sternum. That's a cool road. Where is that? That's here in Utah somewhere. Near the salt flats? Holy shit. No, I think that's uh, um, Antelope the, Island. Antelope North Island. Side. That sounds yeah, it's, delightful. It's, a, it's an island in the middle of the Great Salt Lake. It's not really an island anymore, oh. but it's an island. <laughs> Does it have anything to do on it, or is it just like a piece of land? There's the one of the largest population of buffalo in the country. That's kind of cool. Kind of interesting. Is it buffalo or beefalo? Bison, bison. Okay. <laughs> no, I re I was at the North Rim. And I'm <laughs> Beef <low. laughs> No, no. Do we not talk about this? No, no. I, when I was at the North Rim, uh, they, and remember, I showed pictures of uh, what I thought were bison. Yes. No, that's not true. They they were beefalo, which is literally cows and bison that are crossbred. Oh my god. Smaller than bison, and they the locals hate them because they suck at drought. Oh, because they're related <laughs> to cows. So they need all the water in the world yes. to generate one patty. And it's not like North Rim has a ton of water running around. No, not really. Desert. So I kind of like the rolling shots. The rolling shots look better, but it's got a presence to it. I think the Ooh, size it. It. of the grill, how it looks like it's kind of. I mean, it, it looks like the slots are the same size as the slots in the current Grand Cherokee, but on a vehicle that's quite a lot bigger and the headlights are squeezed around the side to try and make it look wider. And it just, I, I don't know. I got to see it in person. I think when you see it in person, you're going to be like, holy shit. All right. It makes sense now. But the back also just kind of looks like a Navigator or a Durango too. Yeah. It, it has Navigator written all over it. Yeah. Which isn't bad it's just no well to be honest it has grand wagoneer written all over it it's literally the biggest badge Thanks. i've ever seen with the entire <laughs> it's huge out. like and it's down the side too. i mean <laughs> like <laughs> that fits their corporate vibe with ram taking up the whole tailgate you know <laughs> three letters the entire tailgate. <laughs> but i read something today i think i don't know if it was ralph jills but it was about how it doesn't actually say jeep anywhere they want to disassociate, you know, what people think of with the brand Jeep from this wannabe Range Rover competitor. I, I don't that understand that then. Yeah, I don't get that thinking. But like sure. the rest of the Jeep brand is literally like their entire marketing is heritage. 
Which is also where the name of this comes from. Exactly. Like, I don't actually... Huh? <laughs> I know. Uh, that's where it you, ends for you me can't too. even blame this one on stellantis because it happened before that like it's not Can we just blame but, stellantis anyway yeah yeah okay the so same the same people. the grand so. wagoneer trim i just noticed says grand wagoneer down the side says grand wagoneer on the tailgate but you only get wagoneer on the hood mm, they should have put grand no that's the grill they should have put the grill yeah they should have put Sorry. grand on the hood and <laughs> wagoneer above the grill <laughs> <laughs> like the uh is it gabriel and glacier who's got like a ford flex and he's got fluffy spelled out on the on the top oh, of gosh. the nice <laughs> <laughs> that's what they should have done that's oh. funny so it is funny remains to be seen i'm sure they'll sell a metric fuck ton of these things you could see people moving around in the background of the camera shot nice that's how shiny those headlights are and that's also how nerdy i get about staring at b-roll video <laughs> We got Chance here, so he's yeah. the B-roll pro. <laughs> Chance, would you let crew members walk behind you when you're shooting the shiny object? No. No, exactly. <laughs> the person gets fired. They did sneak in the American flag, so I guess that's the the throwback to Jeep Heritage Edition mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know. I like it. I but I, see it. I like stuff on all terrains. That's not... And there's no, there doesn't seem to be any focus to that. Like they talk about four by four systems, but every one of these that they've shown us is like super low profile tires. Yeah, it doesn't look like something I would even think of taking it on a dirt road. Yeah, like can like I get fire an 18 road? I mean, why anywhere? Like no, they're all twenties or twenty twos. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. And the people who came out of like a mid level Grand Cherokee and are stepping up into one of those are gonna have a shit fit when they find out that tires are 400 bucks each. <laughs> yeah. Like literally every image when you Google image search is the lowest profile tire possible. Well, just wait until SEMA 2021. We'll have all the Grand Wagoneers on 35s. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm going to give you a quick shout out real fast, Ross. They won't know. be able to turn, but they'll be on 35s. So it's well, going to be a little, little wear them. Yeah. But we, nope, that's not the right Instagram thing. Crap, what is this? What are you looking for? My off road Lincoln. My off road. Is that it? Is it two underscores? It is two underscores. Is it basically a Grand Wagoneer? um, It's, I, yeah, sure. (laughs) Oh, I've seen that. That was good. I love it. (laughs) Like, I actually saw a lifted uh, Subaru Outback the other day on Mobby tires. It looked kind of cool for an no, I'm on a Outback recent thing. Outback. Yeah, like a, a current gen Outback. Yeah, they look great, and everybody puts the same. <laughs> oh God, what's what are those wannabe rally wheels that everybody puts on them in the cross oh, tracks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Methods, Methods. Marcos, Spar- both of those. Yes, Oz. I'll list every rally wheel I can think of. <laughs> Yeah, they all look good. I, th- I I like the Outback. Didn't you guys just have an Outback recently? Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Couple How'd you ago. feel about it? Uh, not my thing. <laughs> is it the downside? Was it the transmission? That, that yes. is like, the transmission's terrible. The whole interior is just drab and boring. And really? don't get but- me started on the people that drive them. Uh, they're Uh, just oh man we have this running joke that every time we're on a shoot there's almost always a white subaru outback that pulls out in front of us or pulls it in front of a shot and we just have this joke that subaru outbacks ruin everything (laughs) you do live in the land of the subaru outback though everywhere there's probably more per capita in your region than anywhere else on the globe (laughs) yeah probably true or here in colorado I mean, they're, I they're they're just fine. There's nothing wrong with them. I they're don't just, hate them. They're not. I don't know. I don't love well, them. It's it's Speaking the most of, un-American vehicle ever because it's actually a station wagon, and no, like we're SUV people. What are you doing? Yeah, but we also had station wagons for a really long. But they time. sell like crazy, right? Yeah, so they're real popular, and I get why they do. They're I totally get why they do. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly they're, they're the making thing. an off-roady version of that in the Crosstrek sometime soon. I can't remember. It's called Wild. I want to say Wild Peak, but I know that's tire and I know that's wrong. There's uh, a lifted cross track in the neighborhood next to mine, actually. It's kind of cool. 
Yeah, one of the guys that works local to me has an orange one that's lifted and it looks actually good, but it this still has like the wrong engine. And it's quickest still of slow. Google searches. Yeah. Like a cross track with like two inches of lift and KO2s and an STI engine would be turbo. Oh my God, it would be so much fun. And they, they already sell them like crazy, but they'd sell them like crazy. They were really sell even and more. I'd, I'd probably, I would consider buying one if they made an STI cross track. Yeah, right. They oh should. God. They really you need to. Drive dirt roads at like 70 miles per hour. Hell yeah. So you just want them to sell a rally race car? Pretty much. Yeah, okay. why not? Uh, no, I'm, it's, <laughs> no, I'm on board with that. It was just. Those are the wheels I was thinking of. I think those are Sparkos. Hmm. Now I forget what I was trying to Google on the Outback thing. Anyways. You, you said fake rally wheels. I'm like, every rally car runs these. How are they fake? <laughs> They're largely wanted. Chance these. laughed at that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't out loud, but I, my exposure I, to rally racing is very slim. So <laughs> let's keep that in check. <laughs> I feel like the rally guys that I know are like, yeah, we run those. What's your point? Probably. So, anyways, let's move on. Chris, you got anything going other than. <laughs> so <laughs> we're finally going to take the Colorado trip that we were supposed to take last year as the pandemic started. We booked it. We rolled the reservation. Um, we have done the math and that it's a single family home. There's no one else around. We're going to only go to the grocery store and get takeout. Every activity we're going to do is like outside. Like we're going to go dog sledding. Um, there's no way to get a tubing uh, slot right now because they're all full. So we might go snowshoeing. Like we feel like we're responsibly traveling, even though the pandemic's still going on. Except Mother Nature has decided that um, Denver's getting snow as we're headed out. So a lot, a lot, lot they're supposed snow. to get a lot of snow. I, I just, I looked at National Weather Service and it only said three to seven on Saturday. Which is the day you're driving west Most into the, the storm. Way. Yeah. And so I think we're going to go like, we're going to leave a day early. We'll go halfway. And so the last part that we have to travel kind of thing, we'll only have like five to six hours to go to get to the destination. So like if that travel time doubles that day, at least we're only going halfway kind of thing. So like right. it's still a, in a, accomplished in a day. Um, my biggest fear is that they shut 70 down. Um, it does happen. It does happen. Um, because we're going up over the front range. So like we'll be into the hills a little bit. And so that is a possibility. And if they shut 70 down, we're going to wait a day or two around Denver. Cause there's no way there's like the, what would normally take an hour or two then becomes like seven hours to go around. Right. It's just not worth it. So no, like you have to basically go all the way North or all the way South around the mountains. Yes. And that is oh, that's just, horrible. that's not okay. I'm, I'm actually, I'm literally Googling the special weather statement right now. <laughs> I'm close so they, enough. they just, straight shut the highway down right it's not like a chains only situation it's just closed yeah, they close it yeah they literally gates across the uh on ramps gates yeah yep. out in western kansas you'll oh see my like god pointed up all the time and you're like hi i wonder what those are for and then like it's <laughs> you're like, got it <laughs> it's like a drawbridge you go over a bridge you're like what was all that stuff about back there <laughs> like oh going back the other way you're like boats <laughs> so this is the weird part is when I looked at it earlier, it said Denver three to seven inches on Saturday, right? But the winter storm warning is in effect from 5 a.m. Saturday mountain time to 6 a.m. Monday. Oh, shit. And total accumulations is 14 to 24 inches. Oh, my God. That's a lot of With snow. Accumulations up to 30 near Boulder and Fort Collins. So we are going south of that. Holy shit. That's a lot of snow. Um. And this, so this is just a Denver weather update. So it's like suburbs west of Denver, Denver, Castle Rock, and Greeley, which that doesn't really make sense because Greeley's north and Castle Rock south. Like what? That's that's everything. Just covering all their bases. Yeah, that's yeah. well, weathermen can get it wrong, right? Like <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's gonna snow. Is the they're, they're summer here? Like two to four feet of snow. That's. A lot of snow. Ever. This late yeah. in the season too. Yeah, it's it's crazy late in the season for that much snow. Like, yeah. Does that mean it's coming east? Oh no. 
I was going to put my summer tires back on. Sure, I already you did. Should. Did you? you really? Oh yeah, you, you were at a track day. How I warm a track was it? Day the other day, uh, it was in the fifties actually. Yeah, it was pretty. Oh, nice. so could you actually get any heat, or was the ground yeah, still? Yeah, I I, over, I overcooked my tires. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, uh, Ross. Let's see. Do your update real fast. So my update real fast is I am making progress on the Forerunner. Finally, a lot of progress. With a lot of credit to one of my friends at work who has helped. Immensely. endlessly and immensely and like immeasurably how many so, lunch breaks has this person donated to you lots lots, lots. <laughs> but he is very nice to me and a very good friend of mine so he is willing to help so on monday we took off the x hydraulic suspension which came from the factory in 2005 it's a pressurized system that ties into the shocks at all four corners. And it has those two big canisters and then just hydraulic lines that run front to back and actually crisscross on both sides. So the right front and the left rear are tied and the left front and the right rear are tied. So it kind of is like a primitive magnetic ride kind of idea where if you go into the corner, it sends the fluid to the corner that's getting all the body roll and just pumps the shock up. So the body doesn't roll as much. So I <laughs> knew that it had to come off because the suspension in general is shot and it needed uh, to be removed in order to install the new suspension. So we tried very hard to make the fluid stay in the system, which is apparently possible. You can remove the system without the fluid coming out. All the fluid came out everywhere. There was hydraulic fluid oh, everywhere. No. That's the uh, worst. It started with like, that up too. I mean, it's a shop. So we have like shop rags. Oh, and everything, yeah, that but, helps, but still. Well, it started with like a little spray and then it turned into like a flood and there's, it was everywhere. So now x is uh is trash, which is good, except everything I read said it's okay to take it off and drive without it. But everybody who's done it has also swapped their new suspension on like immediately, like with the truck still on the lift. So now... It's the same, you know, original 270,000 mile struts and springs with, and no with no hydraulic fluid holding it up. So it goes over bumps with the like the full fledged, like dead strut, like wave. Just so the spring it's, bounce. It's pretty much just bouncing on the springs. So tomorrow is suspension day. Which that's, that's like me in the 80 series Land Cruiser when the, uh, bottom spindle rusted off that front yes. right shock you know that right front would just kind of every bump uh, i would get nauseous so, yeah so i've been driving it like that as is we replaced the front rear brakes finally which it was pulsating everywhere so uh the, the fronts were you know steering wheel would like shake out of your hands in the back you feel like the seat and the whole back of the car just like bouncing <laughs> so replace that uh, I got a new drive shaft. The drive shaft decided at some point it wanted to evacuate all of the grease from the Is that what's over here on slip the yoke. On fuel tank skid plate. No, that that's the uh, <laughs> that's the power lube that I sprayed everywhere okay. <laughs> because I couldn't see under the truck because I was wearing a mask and my glasses fogged up and I just I was just spraying. So it went everywhere. So replace the drive shaft and the clunk from reverse to drive and dry and park to drive has gone away, which is very nice. Um, and all of this was from, I got it all from rock auto and have like a 20% off coupon. So like I'm in this for, you know, pennies on the dollar versus if I'd gotten OEM or anything. So tomorrow is the suspension day. Hopefully it goes well. It's technically only 12 bolts, which, you know, fa famous last words, if there ever were any. Yeah, technically it's three bolts on the front per strut. And then uh, top and the bottom on the back, I already pressed the new bushings that need to go into the back on the struts. And I got FJ coils, which are floating around somewhere. So they replaced the stock coils and that's it. And then, uh, then I got a couple other odds and ends to tie up over the next few days while I make very quick use of the shop time and tools and lift before I leave this job next Wednesday. So <laughs> I, was, I was about to ask you like, when is your last day? Yeah, it's next Wednesday. And I have four days left of lunch breaks to use the shop. So I'm going to use it. Man. Good luck. So, that's the forerunner update. And right now it's uh, if you, if it's sitting still and you push on it, it just goes <laughs> like back and forth <laughs> and back. It's so funny.
<laughs> it's so bad. I'm like going down hills over bumps in the trucks, just doing like the full bounce over bumps. And like, it's, it's so bad that it kicks ABS on. So really? Yeah. It's like violent. Also the roads here are terrible, <laughs> like really, really bad. Like they, you know, just got warm. So potholes and, you know, expansion joints and everything. And they just don't fix the roads anymore. So they should legalize weed there. Then they'd have tax dollars. They should, and they hopefully will soon. Hmm. All the surrounding states have it. I they, mean, they definitely will before Chance or my state does. Fair bet. <laughs> Kansas fair and Utah that's... are pretty far down the list. <laughs> I the would, order, yeah. girl. <laughs> Which is ironic because you both border Colorado, which was the first to do it. They made a ton of money from it. I guess we don't like money here. <laughs> uh, anyways. Just not, just not the green kind? Hey, hey, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do with that. <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, speaking of chance, so chance from everyday driver, you have some off-road experience and you also have much of childhood in the off-road world. And uh, some of that you alluded to with the, the Cherokee traveling, but yeah. what, was, what was it your childhood about? Well, my, when I was around, I don't know, two or three, my, my parents bought a 1984 Toyota 4Runner. It was white, a uh, little bit of a lift on it. It wasn't anything too crazy. Was, this was like, you know, the, the late 80s, early 90s, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it had uh, blue pre-runner bumpers on it. And I vaguely remember nice. when I was around three, uh, we took it to the dunes at Pismo Beach in Northern California, and we jumped the dunes. I nice. kind of remember that, but oh kind of don't. <laughs> so that's one of my early childhood memories. Oh, my God. Doing that. Where, did um, you live in California, or were you? No. So I, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. And, okay. Uh, I don't, Good place for a pre-runner. We went to Disneyland, and then made our way up north the coast i don't know it was i was three <laughs> <laughs> you remember the truck getting jumped but remember the jump in the truck that's about all i remember from that trip um but then uh a couple years later not even that long later my dad got a 1984 uh, cj7 jeep cj7 Ooh, that was the first fun. family jeep it was a root beer brown it was uh again lifted it wasn't you know by today's standards it was a very very mild build Back then, it was very middle of the road. It wasn't crazy, but it wasn't like cute. You lifted your Jeep. Huge, you know? <laughs> huge builds from the late 80s and early 90s today are like what you can do with a two-inch lift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My this dad had, had, this had maybe 31-inch tires on it. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything wow. There wasn't right. a wow factor to it. Right. Um, yeah, my dad had a YJ. He had an 89 YJ with a three, like, it had 33s and I think like four inches of lift total. And it was huge. And today yeah. it's like a stock jail Rubicon is that big. Right. Or You've practically had a step to get into it. You know, I had to jump. I was, yeah, I was exactly. Young, so. That sounds about right. But now it's like, that's cute. You right. Know? So, so you got the CJ where he got the CJ. Yeah. We had the CJ around that time. Uh, we joined a, a local jeep club the tucson rough riders which still exist they've been around for a long time cool. uh but we went out on the trails pretty frequently and we were in the club for a long long time my dad was actually the the club president for a while wow. um and i don't know the order of things but when we were in the club he came up with an idea to do a um kind of a, a local excursion type thing it was a full weekend you we set up a base camp at one of the state parks and then friday was a was like a, a poker run and then saturday you had your choice of different runs to go on different trails green Same blues with, with yeah, sunday. Like, yeah. yeah yeah and sunday there was a there was a raffle and it, it became pretty huge so it was and overlanding they, before overlanding it was all yeah it was all rock crawling type stuff okay cool and uh it, yeah it was more rock crawling than overlanding right okay so uh, like four low stuff Ooh, my favorite yes yes uh it, it was his idea it was called fun days and it became trail dust days which is what they still hold today 
but it got big enough that I remember magazines covering it. Off-road magazines would come out, oh, wow. cover it to a, like to a Jeep degree. And four wheel and all that stuff. <laughs> yep. And I remember one, one year anyway, uh, they had one of their journalists with them. I don't remember what he was driving, but he was taking pictures and he had a story ended up coming out uh, several months after the fact back then. But that was one of my, my early introductions to the world I'm living in now. Mm-hmm. We're being a journalist and <laughs> photographer and <laughs> doing that kind of thing. It's really kind of funny. So it was uh, the off-road stuff that really got you into it, not the sports car stuff yeah, that you spent really, so much time yeah, in. Yeah, and I didn't even <laughs> think about that until earlier today when I was putting together kind of a synopsis of, of my notes here. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of funny. It all comes full circle, right? Yeah, seriously. So uh, he stuck with the CJ or were there other 4x4s after that? He had the CJ for, oh, I don't know how many years. Had that for a long time. Then we got a 91 Cherokee XJ. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a, a limited, I think. It had like the, the roof console and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, it had... Wheels with 100 spokes? No, it had the... the well, maybe put those on. I don't remember. It's the Jeep. It had, it had different wheels. They were a Jeep time. wheel. Yeah. But I think my dad put them on after the fact. They were off something else. I think they were TJ wheels. I had to think about it. <laughs> to remember. Um yeah, it was not those wheels. Those were the wheels I was thinking of. <laughs> that's the, the that's the classic. Worst, no, that is worst wheel in the world to clean. Yeah. Terrible wheel. It looks like a BBS. Like it looks like, like yeah. a, basket a basket wheel. Wave. Yeah. Yep. Larry so was, would have was, a heart attack on those. <laughs> yeah so it was a dark blue by the time my dad was done with it it had a six inch lift on it 33 Shit. inch tires <sighs> arb air lockers uh, another pre-runner bumper that he custom built himself um and we it had oh it was well over that's 200 000 a, miles that's a lot of lift for an xj that's like a full, yeah it was that's it a was, big build it was a my dad daily drove the thing. It was about at the limit of when you'd want to not daily drive something like that anymore. <laughs> and, oh my uh, god! Uh, Six miles but he, he ended up rebuilding the engine and stroked it to a four point six. So it had nice. had like we guessed two hundred and sixty horsepower, something like that, mm-hmm. which is a pretty big improvement over the stock four liter you know yeah which was like 160 100, when it was 190 new. i think yeah so 160 yeah <laughs> yeah 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 and uh he actually he put i don't know if you guys know this but uh in china they were building the xj cherokee until 2014 what yeah. i didn't know that yeah it was called the the, the jeep 2500 and uh, they had done a they had done a um kind of a facelift on it so it had a slightly different front ends and different taillights so my dad ordered the taillights and put these those taillights in his Cherokee. They were really cool. Beijing Jeep Cherokee 2500. Oh my yeah. God. Oh God, it's scary looking. It's, it's kind oh, of funky no. looking. But the taillights were cool. Yeah, so yeah. That. It's a command. No, kind of commander, Nashiki. kind of liberty, kind of, I don't even know it's, what it's it is. It's an XJ oh, with like just a Chinese front end. It's an abomination. Pretty much. Yeah, the taillights looked more like the Liberty and the, the Ram at the time when it had those those like bubble lights, you know, the mm-hmm. brown things that stuck out. It had those. So that's what he put in it. It was pretty cool. Wow. That's that's a, a scary looking vehicle. I it, That will haunt my dreams. I, because I've, <laughs> I've seen XJs my entire life and I've never seen the grill changed. Yeah, you know? the, the grill is, is really interesting. Oh, that's scary. Oh, it it's so weird. I can't find yeah. any pictures of the back, and I think that's more concerning than what the front looked like. I got the back. The back is pretty much the same. It's just different taillights. They're, they okay. even fit in the same housings. Oh, that's so funny. I got you, that's Ross. So my, my, my skills are on. Yeah, yeah, those. Oh, okay. That's They look yeah. smaller. Yeah, they do. They almost look like Lego pieces. They are literally two blocks. They, they are yeah. two block Lego piece. <laughs> the the badging says, "Is that two S? Looks like two point five E. Looks like it says two point five six. <laughs> oh god! So they only sold it with two five. What a hawk. yeah! They had they had a different engine in them. Yeah. Oh, so that like most terrible. Chinese market stuff, like you'll see a Lexus RX knockoff, and it's like the world's three cylinder diesel engine. <laughs> yeah. Like you're like, what is oh. happening? Uh, so then, so the uh, xj was there for a while then that was there and for was... a long time then we got another xj it was a it's a 2001 
and uh, it's it's got a it was a two wheel drive when we bought it. My dad converted it to four wheel drive. What? And what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know so he can like fabricate stuff. He's like yeah, yeah. He he was okay. he's a wrench. Um, but it, he put I think it's a it's a two two inch lift, maybe four inch. It's a pretty mild lift on it. Mm-hmm. And it was my mom's runaround car. They off-roaded it maybe twice, three times. I don't know. It didn't see trails much. Is and they, that the one that went to Canada? That's, yep, that's the one that went to Canada. Okay. And they And they still have that one today. It's got 260,000 miles on it or something. And yeah. it's not without its problems, but they love it. And it's still going. What is your dad driving these days? Uh, <laughs> he's got a GT350. <laughs> Oh shit! Shelby Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> he went a little so different direction he, there. He changed the yeah. yeah. Well, well, when he was younger, he had a, a '69 Chevelle Malibu mm-hmm. right out of high school. So he kind of came from that, and then took a left turn at off roading and did that for years and years and years. <laughs> so and he went back. back and refound his yeah. his roots. So now yeah. you just need something with four wheel drive. There you go. Well, I so, guess between you have so you currently have the Mustang. I have a Mustang, is, 67 Mustang. Killer looking car. It's not, it's, it's currently, currently broken. It's in pieces. Broken. Yeah. I blew and, the motor a year ago. And then you have the 911. 911. Right? Those and are my it, only two cars. That's okay. So you have four driven wheels. So you're almost and, there. And the, the, the 911 is all wheel drive. So it's technically. Oh, it is an all wheel drive car. Yeah, it's really? Four. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Were yeah, all is. millennium cars career fours or was it just a package? Yes. All the, all the millenniums were career fours. Okay. Uh, why is that there is a mini in that picture? That was my ex-girlfriend's car. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she had just put an exhaust on it at the time. Hey. And that's that's my dog. <laughs> okay. All right. Your dog barking uh, at other dogs on the TV. Yes, he oh, definitely okay. watches TV. It's funny and obnoxious and sometimes annoying. My brother's dog has just started doing that, and she's like 100 pounds, so it's it's not, oh, man. not fun for the TV. Yeah, mine, mine's 19. He's, he's not oh, small, God. but he's not big either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyways, so what do you want to dive into first? We could talk about the Mustang and the 911. We could talk about the everyday driver shoots. I mean, there's a lot to go into here. So, I, I mean, we let's... I, I have a starting point. Do it. I right. got to get back to the picture though. <laughs> Cause that it in chances, Instagram feed, it is the one that sticks out the most. Okay. There's lots of flashy curvy cars. And then there's this giant oh, yeah. expedition XL. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> on methods. So, yes, it is on methods. It is my, my boss's car. It's one of our co-hosts, Paul Schmucker. Um, he, his dad bought the thing, I think brand new. So it's been in the family for ever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so he, he got a hold of it a couple of years back now, put it on these methods and we use it as our, our camera car when we go out filming. Oh, wow. Uh, this particular picture, um, that we were just on, on had, you can see the camera mounted to the front of the car. Holy and, crap. uh, yeah, those are suction cups with the DSLR mounted on the front of the car. And, uh, yeah, when we're out filming, that's what I'm driving, getting shots. Uh, how does it do getting hustled, you have to hustle chasing six thousand pounds? Surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly well. It is on Bilstein's. It's got Bilstein shocks on it, and okay. it's pretty it's pretty decent tires. And I've I joke that it's it's my other car. I've gotten to know it really well. On the same shoot, we went to Colorado last year, last fall. We, we went up the million dollar highway and then um, I forget the name of the highway, but it goes from Telluride to gateway in Western Colorado. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had, I was driving the expedition. Todd and Paul, our co-hosts were in this Mercedes SLK and a BMW Z4. And we had this, we had this group of Ferraris come flying up on us. And uh, most, yes, yeah, so there's, there's a picture of that. Most car guys that own cars like that, they they're really good at planting their right foot on the gas pedal and not so great on corners some of them are but a lot of them aren't and uh so we're going through this windy bit of road and we're all like i bet we can take these guys so we in, start in, an, in an old slk an old in, in old before and an old expedition cars and an expedition <laughs> and we really made them work for it and uh 
by the time we got to a gas station, we all pulled off at the same gas station, and the guys were like, who was driving that expedition? I didn't know those things could go that fast. I'm like, yep, that was me. That was me. They're, they're not supposed to, but you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> That's funny. So are you operating the camera on the front with anything, or is it no, it's like no. static? No, so I usually... With the front mount camera, I'm usually sitting in the right seat monitoring the cameras and Paul will be driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the camera's at the back, then I'm driving camera car and Todd is running the camera. So so there's a lot of of precision driving. We get insanely close to each other with the cars and we, we often joke that you know, we've been doing it so long that we can do it without talking to one another. We get in the mm-hmm. cars and we don't talk on the radio. We just go That's out. That's fantastic. Do it. Yeah. Some and, of those passing shots where the car comes up close behind the camera car and then passes. It's like people don't realize that it's, you know, it looks close, but it is yeah. at speed and, 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 too. And I'm usually looking down at a monitor and I look up and I can only see the back glass of what we're, we're filming. That's mm-hmm. how close we are doing 60, <laughs> 70 miles an hour. Right. And it, there's a, really high level of trust that we have with one another and well, then, we go get it done isn't that kind of how drifting came well, i mean like drifting by itself is awesome and was always going to be a thing but like car shows started to drift more because it was the only mm-hmm. way to show speed yeah that's that's like the the statically. struggle we have is is speed doesn't play well on camera yeah. and speed the slidey shots look a lot more interesting. They're more, more dynamic and there's a lot mm-hmm. more happening. We fly past the cameras way faster than it looks. And we get accused of not driving the cars hard. Right. And we're like, right. well, if you saw the speedometer, I can't tell you what, how fast, <laughs> it was, but if you saw how fast we were actually going, we should be uh, arrested currently, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've fence. had cars. I've had cars where I'm sitting on the white line of the road, you know, off the shoulder, but so I'm not in the lane, but I'm sitting close enough that they'll drive by at 140 miles an hour and I'm four feet oh from the God. car. Holy and crap. It's, it's, Isn't that what your experience in motorsports video, you know, photography is? Hasn't, hasn't, hasn't that taught you to not do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in motorsport, okay. I mean, I mean in, in motorsport, they're at the, at the limit at all times and we're not. We're, mm. I mean, 140 miles an hour in something like a Charger Hellcat or a GT2 RS 911 is just starting you know right right whereas at the track yeah you're pretty far off the track i mean this this shot you just pulled up i'm probably 200 feet from that corner oh wow with a big lens yeah i'm way off the road other places i can get right on them i like the uh amg gt race cars angry looking car they don't seem to win anything but participation trophy they're (laughs) they they hold their own they're pretty competitive I just, this, haven't followed IMSA close enough. These were during the uh, the NASA Utah six hour endurance race that they hold every year. They start the race. This is at Utah Motorsports Campus. They start the race at six p.m. in August, and they run until midnight. So it's the only night race they really do, and it's one of my favorite favorite local events to shoot because we get the sunset and we get the it's night. Just, so you get this shot. It's really, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really cool. Is that one of the nicest tracks in the country just based on like background scenery? Background for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's Holy shit. The, oh my the God, that mountains and everything. No, thanks. The, the sunset really helped on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that's crazy though. That's Chance, wild. Great time to plan for that sunset. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I ordered it up and there it was. <laughs> right? We don't have that here. So I see a picture like that. I'm like, oh my God. Like, So, all right. So you've done a ton of of racing photography yeah. have you because we've had a lot of people who have done like score races and king of the hammers any interest in dabbling in that stuff at some point i would love to shoot rally racing um i have kind of shot um um what is it it's not is it score yeah no core score well there's uh, nora it's, it's nora it's whatever the lucas oil series is i've shot oh. that okay the, the short like, track stuff yeah, it's the short dirt track stuff. With the little I've, jump in the straightaway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I shot those. That looking. was several years ago. And I shot it from the grandstands. I went with my dad for Father's Day. And I, I took him for Father's Day. And I, of course, couldn't help myself. Took my camera with me. Right. And um, But yeah, I'd love to shoot that kind of stuff. I, we did mm-hmm. shoot for the show. Uh, 
Speed Vegas down in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. They've got they've got a little trophy truck kind of track. They call them trophy trucks, but they're little V6 trophy like truck trophy inspired trophy kind of trucks. Yeah, yeah. There's a class at the um, the Mint 400 that runs them. I forget the name of the class, but uh, they are a real off-road truck and you can go pay whatever amount to go do some laps on their track and you jump them. And I shot that. It was pretty cool. That sounds fun. I mean, shooting mid- anything in the air is pretty cool. <laughs> Believe it. So speaking of things that like to go in the air, you guys recently had the Ram TRX. Yes, we did. Uh, did what was there air in the time uh, you had it? A lot of air. Yes. Really? Oh, yes. that's awesome. We jumped it a lot. It, come on, anything that has jump detection in <laughs> on the, as a feature, that that's just asking for it. You know. How did you plan for or? prepare for did you know of a place where you're you're we're jumping the truck here or was it like scouting and then kind of there's a place south of salt lake called little sahara it's a little state park yep and it is kind of as the name suggests it's sand dunes and kind of africa looking Mm -hmm. type it's not a huge area but there's plenty of dunes we went out there never having gone out there before. So we kind of, we knew that there'd be places to jump it, but we, we were of course picky about where we did it. We weren't going to do full send at a hundred miles an hour. Oh my God. No, not like what they the had, like but, some of the journalists doing it, the drive like 75 with a foot down. Like, yeah. So we were, we were jumping, I don't know. We we're probably going 50 or so. We, were, we weren't going slow. Really fast. It was still, we were still getting like, four foot of air beneath the tires yeah there you go four feet oh my yeah. god and the thing the thing uh it, it lands pretty softly actually i mean it's not like a bed of roses mm-hmm. but it, it's not as not nearly as jolting as you'd expect imagine how well it would land if it weighed thousand or two thousand pounds less yeah, it's a 62, 6,300 pound beast. It's huge. I think it's, uh, I read it 7,000 pounds. And we, we, we couldn't find an exact number. That's what we went seven. with. I think, the, I think it's 7,000 pounds. The, the video on it comes out uh, next Thursday. So the 21st, I think it is. Okay. That looks like it was a fun one. It was, my, it was a fun day. It was cold, but it was fun. My favorite pictures because it's actually filthy. Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. mud so, on the thing. The <laughs> mud and the salt that's left over. Like just all of you it. guys did yeah, a good it, job it, getting it, that thing dirty. It snowed on us while we were filming. So it was a weird, we're on sand dunes covered in snow, which yeah. is just a really weird <laughs> it sounds <feeling>. amazing. <laughs> it sounds very uh, slidey. Yeah. Yeah, there was some drifting involved as well. So, so do they require review. it? I mean, it seems like, but do they require you to run the flag, the whip flag? In, On the sand dunes, the yeah. Movies? I mean, we were the only ones out there, but we we did it for Shocking. compliance, you know. But <laughs> sure. uh, we didn't necessarily need it being there, but we it kind of added added to the the look. Aesthetic, yeah. Nice. And it was also it made it easier to find because it's it's a silver for those that are <laughs> that are listening, not watching. It was it was a silver truck on snowy sand dunes <laughs> and it would go you know behind a dune and you couldn't find where it was so on camera it was nice to be able to see the periscope of a flag going by and I was like, oh there's a the truck <laughs> <laughs> now i know what to point at and <laughs> point the camera up an extra like 10 degrees in preparation yeah. for air yeah that's pretty funny so wh- you guys have you've dabbled in the off-road stuff a lot more and more lately it seems more i know lately, yeah it seems like the first big off-road shoot you did was the when the JL Rubicon got released and you drove down yep. and, and read the slick rock. Yep. Yep. We went down uh, Jeep actually had just finished the, the Easter Safari and they had the brand new when the, the two door JL Rubicon had come out, like no one had seen one yet mm-hmm. kind of brand new. They called us up. It's like, Hey, we got this down here. Do you want it for a couple of days before we take it back? Like, well, yeah. So Never they drove it. They drove it back up to us to Park City, and we promptly drove it back down to Moab. <laughs> <laughs> and then you packed four of you into the thing and drove it like all yeah. the way down the highway. Just yeah, we had it. we had four of us. We we did bring we what was would have been the expedition we brought down with us. I think we brought something else down to get there, and then we piled it all into the jeep for actual filming. But we had mm-hmm. had me, Todd, Paul, and Todd's son joined us as well, and uh, we just ran cameras in the jeep the whole we went and did fins and things and uh the the two todd and paul had never done anything like that before they've never gone rock crawling or off-roading or anything so it's a you whole guys, new experience for them oh man that's and, a place uh, to do it 
Well, yeah, it's the place to do it with one of the most capable Jeeps that has ever lived. Exactly. Kind of yeah. Like, so yeah. It's, it's like it's like taking it's our opinion. I shouldn't say our opinion. Their opinion of things like a Rubicon is you drive it on the street and you're miserable. They're not the, the road manners aren't great there but you take it up on a trailer like this is awesome Mm -hmm. you know you can't get any better it's like it's like owning a miata and only using it as a daily driver and then you go take it autocrossing and you're blown away at what the car can do can attest yes can attest Uh, yeah so it's that that kind of thing with jeeps but so we went down there with that kind of mentality of having the right tool for the job as we like to say Mm -hmm. and they were blown away. I'm sitting there in the back seat, trying not to laugh because I'm just kind of being bounced around. Like this is a mm-hmm. really easy trail. Right. Right. But you the, actually knew what was going on and you're like, yeah, okay, yeah. so you're, you can go do this in like four high, you know, not that. Yeah, so so it, it, at the end, I actually got some seat time on camera time at the end of the episode. And I mentioned that, yeah, growing up, I was in a Jeep club and, and then like, well, why don't we have you drive the whole time? <laughs> if they I, actually I, wanted to show it off, they would have put you behind the wheel. Yeah, but I, I had that was the first time I'd ever driven on a, off on a trail myself, actually. Mm. But, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then that that Jeep in stock form was we, we'd have guys come up to us on the trail in their previous gen Wrangler with big mm. lift on it. It's like that thing has everything that my jeep has that i had to put on it myself yes. and that's part of the reason they're so expensive and part of the reason yeah. that they're more capable than ever yeah yeah exactly you know uh, rock sliders lockers sway bar all that stuff like it it kind of it works you know yeah and it you can still get a, yeah you can still get a jeep without all that stuff so oh yeah yeah this just happened to be you know the rubicon with all the stuff mm. on it was that uh was that one a stick or was it an auto uh, the one we had, yeah, it was, a, it was a stick. Oh wow! Okay, so you got yeah, the full experience. Yep. yep. And this was from uh, this was one of one the... of our riders yeah. took that shot. Yeah, he actually lives like fifty miles from me, and we're we're trying to plan a weekend in the woods because he has a ZR two, and I have you know the Forerunner in works to be capable. Nice. Um, so we're we're he said he has some trails up near him, and I I said I would also you know. He's never done like crawling, so I, I oh, want okay. to show him like four low stuff. Uh, but we have to trek to Pennsylvania to do that. So, I was gonna say, is there a lot of raw crawling in your area? In I Connecticut, there is zero muddy. legal off roading. Zero. Oh, really? Not a single like. There's a couple of dirt roads in like the really fancy people areas where there's you know they don't. Yeah. They haven't paved the roads yet, uh, because you know that's like apparently a thing that rich people like. So. Other than that, there are, there is no legal dirt in the state. Interesting, I didn't know that. Sucks. It's Same thing in Kansas. Huh? You have to go to a dedicated off-road park. Interesting. That's kind of. It's not ideal. It's, it's yeah. Really not it's not nine percent of the state is public land, and that's all the state parks. Over 0.7, as I usually say. So. Yeah. We have Moab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'll, I'll sit here and cry. It's it's several hours away from where I am, but yeah, we, we do have Moab. It's gotten to the point now on the podcast that like when we talk about Utah, like Moab's not really what we talk about. Like there's so yeah. many we've there's had enough individuals stuff. that kind of know like other places. Oh sure. That and Moab just happens to be like the Mecca that everyone it goes is, to. Yeah. But... It's it's a Mecca, yeah. It certainly yeah. is. I had two trips there canceled last year, and I've never been, so I'm still like, <laughs> you know, like tiger in a cage kind of thing. Like, sure, gotta go, gotta go. We, we both had Moab trips canceled. Yeah. <laughs> just waiting for the right time. Dude, so we had we had a lot of trails in southern Arizona that that I'd put right up there with some of the trails in Moab that we did that were as far as difficulty and then the articulation and stuff goes there's a lot of canyon trails down there that are like big waterfall climbs is my understanding you know like just huge ledges you know big drop-offs and, and box canyons and yeah, yeah. exactly That's the falls it's like is it Torker there's one falls? that we used to do called copper creek and there was there was mm-hmm. a bypass that you can go around the actual creek but if you went down the creek, it was all r- dry rock. It was just a wash bed, really. And it would take hours to get three-eighths of a mile. Because it's that. just the big group of Jeeps and people are breaking stuff. And mm-hmm. you're just crawling on through. 
I love that. I don't think you could do that trail anymore, actually. <laughs> That's, That's a very pretty, pretty cool. picture. It's, yeah. it's Torquerville Falls, Utah. Uh, okay, and, yep, I've heard of that. And that is the number one Instagram picture taking spot yes. <laughs> at the top of the falls. I bet. <laughs> yes. yeah, it, it, 100% is. It's in the tiny town of Torquerville. Laverkin. <laughs> L A space V E R K I N. I'll I'll sure. save it on my Google, whatever maps, you know. Yeah. Um, so so chance. So you guys have you've had a bunch of sea time with other stuff recently too. I know there was a Tacoma. You had a TRD Pro, and yep. I mean you've you, Forerunner, Forerunner, yeah, and yeah, um, all all those. So most of our series. most of our vehicles we get like mm. that. I I'm actually not on those shoots or test drive shoots. Okay. Um, I do all the editing for a lot of the editing for them, but mm -hmm. I don't actually go on those. Uh, Todd and Paul pretty much run and gun. It's very simple and straightforward, and it takes it takes them like three hours to get the whole shoot done. Oh, they got it down. They, yeah, they, and, it's, and it's it's most most of that time is them is their interview time in the car. Mm -hmm. So. The, the actual shots they get, they do some some hard mount stuff on a camera car. You get front and rear follow footage, and we don't do any anything else for it other than you know the the B roll of showing details and the the exterior and stuff like that. Um, the the TRD Pro Tacoma I did not get to drive. The TRD Forerunner I did though, uh, but only on road, so I didn't really get like a real definitive awesome experience with it it was right. through a canyon road and it's not really meant for that when uh, was that that's probably the trd pro forerunner i was supposed to borrow for one of my trips out west that was, <laughs> when was that was, a was that like now. sometime in 2020 weeks 30 weeks yeah. ago that's the exact same truck that <laughs> yeah, i was that's, supposed that's to borrow. the one yep that's yep. the one god damn it <laughs> <laughs> oh sad but what that was else cool I'd, I'd love to own one of those if i were to get something like that now i mean i like jeeps but with what i'd mm. use it for I, that's not really my thing i think this would suit my needs better yeah realistically the jeep shows its strengths at that last five percent off-road and if you're not doing yeah. that last five percent then yeah and i don't i don't do any off-road anyway it's more like i like the look right. i like the size it's more of a style thing for me i think and at this point and fine it's, in the snow and they're yeah yeah they're great great all so, other car. Uh, speaking of your style if you were to turn either the mustang or the porsche into a <laughs> safari or rally car which would it be <laughs> Probably the 911 because that's actually a thing. There was a guy though that uh, rallied a 67 or 68 Mustang in period at the uh, what was the rally? It was in Mexico. I forget the name of the rally. So you you can Google it and find oh, pictures oh, of the oh, thing. I know which one you're talking about. It's a big oh. lifted monster jumping. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not not really my thing. Uh, I did have a neighbor growing up though in high school. He had a one of his really good friends had this lifted el camino with a big v8 really loud it, it was bright orange so if you didn't hear it coming you definitely saw it coming it looked like a monster truck mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, just, was it really an el camino or was an el camino was, body on like a tahoe frame i that i don't know but it, <laughs> it, it was yeah that probably was a, it could have been one of those but mm -hmm. it was just just ridiculous okay. loud thing so uh so safari 911 is the the choice that's probably what, yeah that's probably what okay. i'd do I wouldn't really do that, but that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the, the Mustang sounds like it's in progress. It's it's, it's, it's kind of things happening. Yeah, or it's not. kind of stagnant right now just for financial reasons. But uh, what was I, the prognosis? Um, I think one of the piston rings failed. Okay. I'm not a piston ring and probably a rod bearing. And just let go. Yeah, so yeah. I I was pulling out of a park, pulling into traffic, and you know it's a '67 Mustang with a 5.0 manual, roughly 300 horsepower. Not crazy, but it's still it's still moved. Mm -hmm. and I, it's I, a light car. Yeah, so I pulled into the traffic and kind of rolled into first, shifted into second, and punched it because that's what you do in an old muscle car. It's just what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I I. I about a second later, there was a loud bang. The The car shut off and I was like, well, that's not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled off the side of the road 
it wouldn't start back up. Well, it would start, but it would immediately die. No and compression. The, yeah, so I had to have a, a tow truck called. There was actually, I don't know how it happened, but the the belt, it threw the belt. The oil filter had been spun halfway off, so it dumped all the oil all over the place. Which oh. I, don't, I don't know how that happened. I still oh. don't know how that one happened. So my first thing was, okay, well, put the belt back on. I thought it just threw a belt. Put mm-hmm. the belt back on, went and got some oil, refilled it, and it was just... No, not happy. Not yeah. not at all happy. So towed it home. It sat for a long time just because I it was the middle of winter and I didn't have time to, to put into it. Um, about two months ago now, maybe I finally tore it down to the point where I have the heads off the engine, and you can see bore scoring on one one of the cylinder walls. Mm-hmm. I found pretty large chunks of piston in the oil pan. Oh. Uh, so it's not like little metal flakes in the, yeah, in the oil no, as it, it turns was, out. It was it's like like, it was definitely like like yeah, it was it was pretty large. There's actually pictures of it on. So I've got an Instagram account just for that car. If you go to my my Instagram, it should be up in my description. Project Pony Up. It's one of the first pictures on there because I haven't haven't driven it. I've got uh, yeah, it's, it's of, not like that. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am okay. scrolling for Mustang pictures and he's got a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there's the, the problem side, that third piston in, you can see even in that picture, you can see the bore on the, the scoring. Yep. Right there. Yeah. It's sco- Oh my God. I thought that was just like carbon residue. Holy nope, shit. That is scoring. Yeah. Oh man. That's so deep. pretty nasty. So that's the other side. The other side looks more okay but yeah. there's still some damage there so i i need to pull the rest of the engine out and send it to a machine shop and see mm. if it's even possible to rebuild the block but yeah it's it's uh well that's yeah. unfortunate so i'm not sure where i'm gonna go with it yet but that thing's hasn't that always been a project didn't it start as a project and it's just yeah yeah evolving? i got it i got it when i was 14 actually it was meant to be oh, a, a father-son project through high school as a you know do good in school and we'll build it up and that kind mm-hmm. of thing um brought it home september 11th 2001 oh, oh shit. shit so yeah <laughs> yep a lot it's a of rough day You're never gonna forget uh, it no uh-huh. but uh yeah it's been a, a slow work in progress here and there as <laughs> time and money permit Wow. So you've had that thing 20, almost 20 years. God damn. A long time. Wow. It sat, now in that time, it sat for more than half of that. So it, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, when we bought it, it had already been sitting on blocks in someone's backyard for about 10 years. Uh, it took probably two years of here and there working on it through high school to get it running. And I didn't drive it until, oh boy, probably 2007 took it for its first oh, drive around the block and so, okay. it, was, it was just yeah it was just going through going through i mean the the entire suspension was replaced front and rear mm-hmm. brakes were done like making sure it was safe to drive you know as it been sitting for yeah, so long it sits for that long i mean and then uh then i got married and moved out of state so it sat in my parents place for several years before we brought it up to utah or kind of finished off got it running and registered for the first time in that would have been 2012, I think, thereabouts. 11 years after you got it. Yeah. New life on the right. road, legal. <laughs> that was the first time it had been registered in like 20, 20 something years. Wow. And oh, that's I pretty drove, cool. Yeah. And I daily drove it for, I don't know, almost a year, blew that engine up. Which was, <laughs> As you do. Which was, which was, I mean, I don't know how old that engine was. It was the engine. Yeah. That was actually, it was two or three days after I took that picture that it blew up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> at least yeah. it's, uh, it's, you know, it's documented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that day it was, I think it was seven degrees outside when I took that. Oh, how and, bad wasn't the heat? And the, the heater didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the heater cord had been bypassed oh because God. it leaked by a previous owner. And, uh, yeah. So I drove it That's around daily driving in utah snow with no heater oh my god for a while are those the it's not the modern latest iteration of the bullet mustang but what was the are those the bullet those, wheels yep those are bullet wheels okay. they're the oh, really? 0, 01 to 04 body Thank style you. wheels yeah yep. 
Oh, good, that's good so, catch. wait, can good you pull catch. that back up? I didn't even notice that. I have a close-up shot. And the, the older wheels, those black ones, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. And those yeah. those brakes that are behind those wheels are off of a 2005 Mustang GT. Um, fun fact, those wheels, those wannabe like torque thrusts, they, uh, they, they, they fit perfectly on the NC Miata. <laughs> really? <laughs> and the guy who has helped me with the Forerunner through this whole thing that's is funny. a huge Mustang guy. He loves Mustangs. He's always so, you know, so you, he just you got one. And you I, put a V8 in it and call it a well, day Cobra. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, the V8 in it is going to be my 40th birthday to myself. Birthday present to myself uh, in, in in ten years, and uh, but I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Mustang wheels on it and not tell him and drive into work one day. Or well, be, that, won't, be, be won't be work at that point, but I'm gonna drive to his house or something and be like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's gonna look at me. He's just gonna like walk away. <laughs> Love it. That's great. They're they're heavy though. They're like so they're, yeah, they're not a light wheel. Each. Yeah, they're not a light and wheel. Stock and see me auto wheels are like just over seventeen. Those are light. Yeah, that's my 911 wheels are like 26, 27 pounds. They're heavy. But they're also how much wider than a Miata wheel? Uh, yeah, the front, the rears are 11s, 18 by 11s. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> seven and a half. <laughs> yeah, <So>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that that's why it's so hard to find something inexpensive that's lighter is because they're like, you know, they're they're so light as is. And mine are RX, 31. Yours are 31. <laughs> well, listen to this one. The RX-7 wheels that I have on it for the winter are 14 pounds each. What? Yeah, 16s. All right. All so right. You said RX-7 pounds. wheels? Yeah, they're OEM RX-7 wheels. What? Yeah. Bolt right up and have the right offset. Oh, just the, is it like that a makes sense? Spoke? Like, like, the, like yeah, the early the, ones? The, the big hand, yeah. The FD wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's well, the not FD the wheels. image I wanted to share. Yeah. Oh boy! <laughs> Not gonna ask about that. <laughs> I mean, the Google search was Mazda RX-7 yep. wheel, so it wasn't. It's the same wheel I have on currently outside, and same color car. But oh, that's right. Yours is, I'm, I'm picturing an NA, not an NC. Yeah. That's that's no, why I was thrown off NC. there. I drove yeah. it today for the first time in 13 days. It was nice. Revelatory. <laughs> oh my god! I put the roof down for the first time since like October. It was amazing. Nice. Nice. I, I love That's that the car. Best. The car, it's so slow and I love it so much. So I'm trying to do actually my first track day next weekend, weather pending. Nice. Do it. So we'll do see. It. Yeah. I, we may get, you know, some crazy snowstorm in the middle of next week. Well, you know, the track here, they do a series called winter cross every Saturday, rain, shine, mm-hmm. snow, doesn't matter. They don't clear the track up. They might put cones out there for you or something. But yeah, <laughs> they do that at Lime Rock too. They do it in the snow, but it's like $300. I think really, this is like over there insurance. It's like 50 bucks for oh an hour. God, no, that's what bucks all... for an hour of track time in the that's snow. Great. Awesome. Yeah. I did one four wheel drive the, Porsche. <laughs> the, the, the lousy part this year, we, we haven't had a lot of snow here in Utah this year especially on a weekend. So I, I tried to plan one when I knew a storm was coming. So I registered for one, uh, maybe a month ago now. And all it did was rain. So, so, oh, the worst. So, but I was the only one there. So I had a full hour of track time to myself. That's amazing. Did in you have wet? to go window down in the wet? They, they told me I was supposed to, but they're like, you're the only one here, so I won't yell at you if you keep your windows <laughs> up. So I, I, I kept them up for most of the time. So there's there's turn five on the west track of, of UMC. is a hairpin. And I just, I turned off traction control and I just mm. practiced Hot drifting it. the thing. Nice. It's not it's not an easy car to drift. I had a BRZ before and that thing was stupid oh, easy is. to drift. 911 How- was, once I kind of wow. figured it out, it wasn't bad. But once you, once it, caught grip or once you twitched wrong it would just loop on you how does the all-wheel drive system on that car work and just i need i have like five minutes and i, I well maybe probably less but just curious is it all 50 50 50 50 or is it no it's it's a what is it it's, it's like a 60, down, 40 no it's even less than that it's actually it's kind of a part-time system it's as little as five percent front and as much as 40 I want to say forty okay. percent up front, so it's it's variable, huh. depending on what it what it thinks you need. Oh, that's pretty clever, actually. Especially. Yeah, so turn five, the one straight up on the nope, not that one. Go straight up, that one. Okay. 
so I was drifting around that one, and the last time I tried it, uh, it the car, the rear end of the car bit, and I got a tank slapper and tank slapper nice. off into the dirt <laughs> and brought a whole bunch of gravel back with me. They kicked me off the track for like twenty minutes. They can yep. clean it all up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh it's fun it's fun when the guys at the track let you kind of like just go for it like i, yeah, when I was I mean, volunteering they were, they were um, bored out of their minds i'm sure but at, there was i was volunteering at lime rock in like 2014 and at the end of the year all the volunteers <laughs> get like an open autocross day on the infield circuit at lime rock and okay i had my challenger which was a horrible horrible car for this because it's a yeah. tiny tiny little track and the way they run autocross at lime rock is there's no like single run it's just like five cars all going non-stop until somebody gets bored yeah and i got really frustrated because a guy in a uh in a a mach one like in a what are they the new edge mustangs ran okay. me down after like three laps because the challenger wouldn't turn and, yeah uh, and i just went to the guy who was running and i was like listen like i i, I am gonna get past like is it okay if i just you know practice sliding and just drift all the corners and he looked at me and he's just like as long as I don't have to clean you up. And that was it. <laughs> and that was how the rest nice. of the day went. And that was how the rest of that set of tires went. Nice. So that was fun. Yeah, my last my last real track day I did, it was a NASA day. And uh, uh, there was a supercharged GT350R on track with me. 740 horsepower to the wheels in that oh, thing. Oh my God. And you know that, that car in stock form is faster than mine any day of the week yeah all the time i caught the guy and passed him it's like hmm. well, you, you need a little you need a little more tire but yeah. <laughs> maybe a little more driver suspension. training and maybe a little more driver training they yeah. they uh they bumped us both up though at the end of the day to the next next um class so that we can hmm. we can do open passing which will be cool next time so nice that's cool that's cool i'm excited so. All right, so where can everybody follow you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so <laughs> Fatty Hales on Instagram and Twitter. That's with a PH. There's mm-hmm. a story behind that. Um, then Everyday Driver at Everyday Driver is everywhere. Instagram, um, uh, Twitter. All the medias. Uh, yeah, everywhere. Cool. So, cool. And you guys have some fast and fun and loud stuff coming in the pipeline. Yes, we're currently filming for our ninth season of television which is crazy to think about uh we just did the we were in denver two weeks ago not even that long yeah two weeks ago with a mercedes gls 63 the 600 horsepower thing that's almost it's almost as fast as a mclaren f1 which is insane that's psychotic which is insane to think about and then we also had the the dodge durango hellcat with us Mm -hmm which was also just fast demonstration uh, in excess. Yep. So that's, that's upcoming. We're sh- going to be filming again in a t- couple weeks, also in Denver area with the Mustang Mach E Volkswagen ID four and the oh, Tesla cool. model Y. We're when are you guys going to be there? About two weeks, two or okay, three weeks. So we're just going to miss each other. This yeah. Be it's, really it's the close. Be- beginning of yeah. April. Yeah. Oh, it is so, the beginning of April. You'll be there yeah, the same. I'll uh, be there. What? Well, yeah, I'm gonna be there the f- first to the fifth. We will be there. It'd be funny if we're there the same time. That would actually be funny. <laughs> we'll be there the twelfth through the fourteenth. Oh, uh, <laughs> I will be in. Uh, Missed you by a week. Oh no! I'll, yeah, I'll be back. You'll be home by then. then. I'll be home. I'll be starting my new job. So. All right, cool. We, got that. we don't have anything else serious in the pipeline yet. I mean, we do, but I can't talk about it yet, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> this doesn't come out for yeah, another week. You can't week. scoop yourself. That's just how that goes. Uh, yep. We do have the, like I said earlier, we have the TRX piece coming out. That's on the 18th. I think I said a different mm-hmm. date earlier, but it is next Thursday, the 18th on our YouTube okay. channel. That'll be fun. Be I'm looking forward to that. It will have been out for a week by the time this comes out. <laughs> okay, so it'll it'll Perfect. be out <laughs> in the it's past. Out. Watch it now. It will have Watch come it out. <laughs> so awesome! All right, man. Well, thank you for joining us. This has been fun. It I has. thanks for having me on, guys. Very welcome. I hope we do cross paths at some point someday. Yeah, Maybe I'll take a trip out there once the weather is not shit. So <laughs> yeah. we've been talking that about for like years now, just like Hoonaverse goes off roading because yep. 
coast to coast, Midwest, like we all have some form of SUV. We've just never been together at the same time. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. And speaking of Hooniverse and Mustangs, if Will is listening, Will, we're glad you're okay. Yes, dear Lord. I'm, not, I'm not sharing that photo, but I'm really Mustang glad he's okay. Down. So <laughs> not his fault. We'll preface it with that. Anyways. All right. Chance, thanks again. Of course. And uh, yeah. That's it.